Hi, this is Max Proud and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'll show you how to create some nice uh, eye glowing effect. And this is what we'll be creating. And again. Okay, all you will be needing is um, this mesh, skull mesh, I found on the internet. I'll post the link below. It's basically just untextured skull and of course Hayate. Now let's start with the new scene. Uh, there it is. Okay. First, uh, let's set up everything. Drag the skull into the scene, reposition it, and uh, let's change the rotation just a little bit here and set up the basic lighting. Okay, I'll just disable ambient light here and uh, yeah, I'm gonna set up the camera so we have a good look at our skull and then I'm going to create some lights. Point light just for quality I'm going to make this a little bit red, reddish, just like this maybe. Mm, maybe a little more yellow. Get closer and increase. No, no, not the intensity. Okay, then I'm duplicate duplicate the light, put it on the other side, and make this blue. Okay. So to make this skull a bit, a little bit more threatening, if you open the jaw, yeah, move it a bit like this. Uh, that looks good to me. And then create uh, some glowing eyes, or where the eyes should have. Looks good to me. Mm, yeah, maybe just decrease the attenuation here, the range. Get brighter. Duplicate again and put it in the other hole, eye hole. Now just see if the camera is set up good. Yeah, good enough for me. And now it's a. Um, Bloom lens flare, post effect, just to give it a nice touch. Yeah, this looks good. Oh, maybe I move the the lights the, uh, on the outside a bit down. Maybe yeah. Yeah, I think this is okay for now. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, now to the effect itself. Let's create a new particle system. And add Hyatt, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to set it up uh, as I like it. Uh, Log FPS. And I'm going to use Perlin on all three axes. And I think I'm going to go with Absolute simulation. So let's um, ramp this up a bit. It's good to me. I um, want this effect to be not as three-dimensional as you might expect it, because we don't want the particles to move through the skull and just move it to, to the side slightly. So um, now what we need to do is set up Shuriken. I'm going to increase the particle count to 5000 and I'm going to emit uh, let's create let's do the user curve here maybe around 2500 particles and then quickly yeah, decrease it to zero so that we got a nice burst and I'm going 
to use a sphere emitter. I think I make it make it a bit smaller so it fits into our eyes in our eyes. You're gonna do the the holes right about there. I think this is a good position. <coughs> we keep the local space, the uh, local simulation space on and um, set the lifetime to about um, one to two seconds and make the size a bit uh, the size of the particles a bit smaller. Point one, point one to point three should be okay. See that? Okay. Now let's add uh, finally the material. Um, you can take the material from the demo folder in uh, the magic demo. I got a bunch of materials that is good for this purpose. So we go back to the particle effect and drag and drop the glow sphere on top of it. Let's see how this looks. Mm, yeah. Looks like some magic effect, but I think you don't really get the the speed of those particles, so I'm going to enable stretch boards here. Okay. Let's go to the tweaking part of this uh, tutorial. Um, what we want to do is um, we want to move those particles to the left and have them being changed by the turbulence, have this nice turbulence effect, and then make them disappear. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to change um, the global force. So um, I think we, we're going with animation curves here. So just press the button, toggle it, create a new um, curve, and set it to five seconds because that's the time we are using in the uh, shuriken emitter. Okay, so we want to move it, we want it to be moving to the left side, so we gotta increase this, uh, no, we want it to be slow in the beginning and then quick in, in the end. So we're starting off slow, um, maybe, yeah, around I guess zero should be f um, something something above zero point five, and then move this up to let's try one hundred. I know the animation to affinity is not the best, but I think we can work with it. Okay, we got a nice S curve here. Let's see what this does already. Uh, maybe we set this up as well to one one one. It doesn't matter what what uh, what's left and right behind this value. It will always be clamped, so we don't care about that. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, it's still moving forward, and um, that's of course because we have not set up the rotation correctly here. So let's see where's it going. Let's move it, drag it out a bit. See where is it going? Okay, it's moving down. So let's uh, change the rotation of this again. And you see, it's moving to the left. Okay, so we are going to use 90 degrees on the z-axis. Okay, it looks already quite good. But what we want to do is we want to move it up just a little bit, and uh, maybe. Uh, animate the frequency of a lifetime. So um, I think we I'm going to, to use animation curves here as well. Go back to um, this value here. Uh, just have to zoom out a bit. And let's see, maybe yeah, we 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 first set the keyframe again to, to five seconds here and this is the value. So we, we're going to start with 0.5 um, and then re 
reducing it to uh, we're starting with 1.5 and going down to 0.5. I'm going to save this as a new uh, preset here to uh, have it easy, easily integrated into the other fields as well. Okay, let's see how's it going. Simulate again. Yeah, it looks good. But um, maybe we want it to be just a little bit more diverse. So let's. Uh, Try playing around with the offset a bit. Looks okay. Did we put some? No, we didn't. So maybe we should play around with this value a bit. Move it up, 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 up. Even further. I guess we have to do this again. Zoom out. Move up, zoom out, move up. So let's see how does it look like. 120, yeah, 10, 20. I have to select everything, go back to 5. And it looks okay to me. Now maybe we reduce the, the frequency on the z axis as well to have it uh, not go. As, uh, as strong on this axis. Let's see. That uh, looks good to me. Then maybe we play around with the offset again to find a good value here. Uh, maybe on one. No, that's not what we need. We, want, we need it to be more on this side here. <coughs> see, pause it and try to rotate it again to see if this is maybe something we can need more. Yeah, looks good. Um, maybe we should re uh, limit the force over lifetime to have it. Um, um, to, to, to let the bucket particles slow down in the end. So I think we start with um, 3 and uh, dampen of 0.8. This should, down, this should slow it down significantly. And yes it does. So what can we do to prevent this from happening? We don't want the particles move through uh, the skull, or at least not in visible kind of way. So I think we, we got to increase um, some values here. Let's see what we can do. Um, I'm going to increase uh, the strength, the amplitude on the y-axis a bit to see where this is going. Okay, this is of course the <laughs> wrong axis. Let's go to the x-axis. Uh, play it again. Yeah, I think we could need more force here. Maybe we should go up to 200 just to see how this is going. And not perfect yet, but better. No. Three maybe. Four. Okay. Um, I just need to try out a bit, try it out a bit to find the perfect angle here. Just move it a bit uh, to the front. Yeah, that looks good. And just while we are at it, um, change the color of the lifetime. That's here to make it fade in, and then. Want to to make to make it fade out in the end just a little bit, and um, I think the problem is that it's a bit too too far on the on the right. So I'm going to move it a bit left and down. About there, Let's see. Yeah, it looks good. I think we need even more force here. 
move this up a bit. Let's see where it starts in the beginning. Hmm. Even more, 300 maybe. Does this do the trick? Let's see where's the axis. I should rotate it back. Ah, there we go. Just going through the through the skull, and you can see it <laughs> flying around here. What does it look like? Let's move it out here. Okay, we definitely need more force on in this direction here. So let's do it. Simulate loop. Maybe if we increase the time of the emitter a bit. That uh, that that means that now it's six uh, seconds long, and the particles that have been spawned somewhere around here will have uh, longer time to travel at this uh, value here. So uh, I think this is pretty nice. Let's see. Let's go. Just wrap this up here to see. Is this the correct direction? I think so. Maybe we, we change this value again. Yeah, this looks actually uh, pretty nice. Now um, we got some particles still flying around here, but uh, I think we can tweak that later. Okay. Now um, <coughs> we want to have this effect on both eyes, and um, if we just uh, du duplicate it and uh, turn around then these effects will be absolutely symmetrical and this is not what we want. See, this is just the same effect. So um, the trick here is uh, you could animate the offset but we use the offset here to uh, to change the evolution of this uh, effect here. So instead um, I'm just going to uh, change this value here just a little bit and these these other values here as well are 0 0.05 maybe 0 0.1 and let's see what this effect looks like now yeah almost maybe I'll change this here and maybe we increase this even further I uh, know wrong direction I guess we gotta go into the other direction, make it smaller. Yeah, so we still got this going to the uh, to the outside direction here, to the to the right. And now let's see what our creation looks like. Awesome! I hope you liked this tutorial and uh, check out the other tutorials. See you again. Bye.